Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of Unknown to World Known. We're back with Barcelona once again. We're back a little bit early, earlier than planned, because we've got a Copa del Rey semi-final to play. And we've been going well in the league as well. Let's have a little look in, further into that. So just after the most recent episode, we actually had a disappointing 1-1 draw with Real Betis. And Real Madrid got a 95th minute equaliser in that game, so they went level on points with us. We then beat Las Palmas in the fourth round of the cup. We then beat Real Oviedo 2-1 in the league. And I believe it was in that game Real Madrid then dropped points to, I forget who it was, I will double check. Which meant we went back to two points clear. We then beat Granada in the fifth round of the cup 3-0 very comfortable and then most recently we beat Espanyol 1-0 so we're back now for the first leg against Atletico Madrid and Levante and then what we're going to do is jump ahead and we'll show you the Milan game and the Leganes game uh, the second leg and the league game league wise as I mentioned we're two points clear once again it was while we played Oviedo, Real Madrid conceded a late goal to Malaga, which meant they did drop off. And they've now been, they've had a comfortable win against Valencia. Their next game sees them play. I can't spot their game. They might play in the, they play Athletic Bilbao, so that'll be a tough game for them, although they have dropped off drastically. Let's go and see how we get on against Atletico Madrid. The lineup for today Claudemer is in goal. Deverne, Pardini, Vinhas, and Ingayan have playing as the back four. Kone and Nico in midfield together with Ortet on the right. Havertz through the middle. Damsgaard on the left. And Silva through the middle. Um, we have also had a bit of transfer movement. So. We've actually promoted Max into the first team. He looks quite a good player for us. And we've nearly gone 1-0 up straight away there. So Max is now a member of the first team. Which is because Conchiao has left. He threw a bit of a fit over the fact that I rejected a bid for him. And... He just he wanted to leave because he wants to win the Champions League. Wouldn't give I I said, give me next year to do it, because, I think this team does need a bit of improvement before we're there. He rejected that, so I said okay get out. Seventy million pounds we sold him for to, Manchester City. However. As a result of that, we were then able to bring in a new left back to help with Emrick and Nguyen because recently Nguyen has been the only one playing left back due to the injury to Emrick. So we've brought in the youngster from Athletic Bilbao. I think it's Jose Perez. Um, he was expensive. Uh, £68 million, pounds, so basically all the Conchial money for a left-back, which is concerning. But he look, he's got world-class potential. He's already a pretty good defender, so I'm hoping... I mean, it's, it's more his attacking that he needs to improve more than anything, as Atletico have found a good long ball forward there. But then, a fantastic tackle from De Verne to prevent anything coming of it. So hopefully Perez can develop his attacking output because that's the main thing that we're going to be looking for from him at the moment. And then if he can develop that alongside his defensive capabilities, we could have one hell of a player on our hands, which would, of course, allow Nguyen to go into his preferred position in midfield. And overall strengthen the team for it as a ball in has found Traore who's put Atletico Madrid 1-0 up that's not not part of the script that 
good bit of an exchange between him and Fanberg and Nico having to cover there. Ingoyen really should have been to that, and then how he's managed to get into that space, I will never know. Well, we're going to have to go positive now then. But hopefully today we can get an away goal at the least. I'd like I'd like to be level going into the home leg as a minimum. You don't want to be losing your first leg. And then I think in the home leg we can kind of take control of this game and really put them in their place, hopefully. As a long ball forward, Nguyen's got to deal with that better. And does get the block in there. And then, of course, following the games against Atletico Madrid, we'll have the Champions League knockout starting. We can see if we can advance into the quarterfinals. Playing AC Milan, I would would have thought we'd be able to advance there. Or Tess brings the ball down, but yeah, as I thought, I thought he was offside. And hopefully we can get a win against Milan. I would have thought we could and then see what happens in the quarterfinal. We really want to avoid Manchester United. I've learned that. They were they were a very good team. Which is nice for me because I yeah, Man United fan. I don't I don't I want them knocked out so that I don't have to play them. But nevertheless. I think most of the teams will probably have a good chance against. They do, they do just seem very, very good rather than... I, don't, I think they're one of the standout teams in Europe at the moment more than anything. And that might be what's caused us a problem against them. We're going to send Max on for Damsgaard just to see if he can contribute something late in this game. Havertz with the free kick sends it in. Oh, and it's headed away from Jorge. And there's a bit of a break here on for Atletico. And then Guyon's been done for pace. Damsgaard, uh, De Verne's having to cover. And this is a very dangerous situation. Oh, and it's ended up over the bar, which is a bit of luck for us. And I'm not sure we're going to get another chance in this game. Which means we might be picking up a loss and having to turn it around completely in the second leg that is what's going to happen so maybe we come back for that game I'll consider it with us having to turn it around what a game that is between Levante and Real Madrid and fair enough we're going to go and play Levante right now and to try and get the win against Levante we're going with a relatively unchanged lineup. Perez has come in for Nguyen, and Gerard has come in for Altet. So we get to see Perez for the first time in the series. He's played once off camera, I believe. He played in the, the Copa del Rey game against Granada. And we've just hit the bar within five minutes. That's a promising start. Now Perez going to throw it into Havertz who finds Nico. Nico plays it off to Zverne who plays in Gerard. That was a poor finish. We're going to just encourage them. That's a very strong start that we've had. Perez heads down to Damsgaard who's going to go on a bit of a run. It's nice to have Kone back following the African Cup of Nations. He was missing for near enough all of January in the end. Havertz Finds De Verne. Coney plays it through for Gerard, And there's a fantastic block in there. But we're coming straight back at them. And the the way we're passing it at the moment, that was phenomenal few passes. And then the tackle interrupted it. But we were sending them chasing, chasing shadows. And now it's a goal kick for them. Vin has had space to bring it down and start us off again. Nico running towards the flanks. Plays it back to Perez, who goes inside. Havertz, Fabio Silva, Gerard. Oh, and he's missed it just wide again. 
has a few chances Gerard has had that he's sent just wide. Hopefully he can uh, adjust his shooting boots and put them on target. Fabio Silva on a break. He's just going to go straight past the defender and slams it into the bottom corner. No questions asked when it comes to Fabio Silva. 26 goals for the season. So he has been phenomenal. And look at the run here. He just sprints straight past number four and doesn't even let the other guy get near him. And, of course bit reminiscent of Wilson Silva has been, you know, had a bit of a poor season the year before I came in and then I've come in and just got him scoring goals again and it looks like we've got a penalty here, although Wilson was a signing I made, I think he had a good year at the club before Roma but it came to life under me. As has Fabio Silva. That is goal number 27. And he's only had a, he had a short spell out of the team due to injury. But since then he has been back in phenomenal form. And there's been no sign of it ending which has been lovely as well. And we find ourselves 2-0 up going into the half time break. And... Let's tell them not to get complacent. And there's not really anything for us to look for today. Atletico, I'm pretty sure, had already finished their game 1 0. So they're now level on points with Real Madrid. Of course, that game in hand could very easily see Real Madrid continue to, uh, well, pull back away from them. We're going to send Max on again. Because at 2-0, seems like a good chance for him to get a few more minutes under his belt. And then we might just look to make one more change. Get Havertz off for Jean Carlos. Just for fitness reasons. Havertz is quite a key player for us to keep fit. Although given his age, maybe we look at selling him on in the summer. And replacing him with a younger version of him. De Verne finds Kone, who, oh, what a strike that was from Havertz. Fantastic save by the keeper as well, to be fair. Jean Carlos with the free kick and Jorge's hit the bar. That's at least twice we've hit the bar in this game. Carlos with the free kick. Oh, that goalkeeper is on fire. It's unlucky to have conceded two goals the way he's playing, to be fair to him. And Gerard has picked up the ball from the clearance and it's headed away. Yeah, I, I have to compliments to the goalkeeper for Levante Aguilar because he's pulled off some phenomenal saves. But nevertheless, a 2-0 win sees us through to the to a five point lead at the top of the table game in hand of course for Real Madrid but then we've got momentum on our side again and we've made it five unbeaten in the league following the disappointing loss to Tenerife but that's a whole lot of green and it does mean of course the win against Real Madrid means there's now no longer an unbeaten team in the league. We'll have a very quick look at the other league. So Manchester United running away with the Premier League a little bit there. PSG running away with the French League, no surprise there. Hertha Berlin are actually above Bayern Munich in the league. So there's a bit of title challenge going on there. Juventus running away with the Serie A title. And then... There's not really much else to look at leagues-wise. Ajax have dropped down quite a bit in the Eredivisie. Out of interest, I mentioned Manchester United seem to be a bit of a powerhouse at the moment. How true does that ring in Europe? Not massively. They haven't won the the Champions League or been runner-up in six years now. They've won 
the last two Premier Leagues. So, so maybe they're just starting a period of true dominance now from the looks of it. You know, there's an FA Cup there. I think that might be, they might well be on for a period of dominance coming in now. The Champions League winners in recent years have been where you had Bayern Munich was the last real one. So you had United, two Liverpools, two Uniteds, and then you've had PSG, Man City, Eintracht Frankfurt, Chelsea, and Bayern Munich. Eintracht Frankfurt. That's amazing. And now the da- Oh, wow, that is a drop off in that season. Wow. Completely forgot that had happened. But yeah, hopefully we can, in between episodes, we can get a solid win in the home leg and then hopefully find our way through in the second leg of the Copa del Rey. I probably won't come back for it just because of how soon it is. And then we'll come back for the game against AC Milan in the second leg. If you have enjoyed that, please do leave a like, comment down below how you think we're going to get on in the first leg and the second leg of the Copa del Rey. And subscribe if you are enjoying the series. Thank you very much for watching.